to Michelle Art Rooney, the second, the grandson of Art Rooney, the founder of the team, son of Dan Rooney. He also said to me before the game, he said, if anything good comes out of this, it'll be to provide a broader societal awareness and change when it comes to domestic violence. Amen. And the NFL has to be the front runner now. They have to set the standard for everybody else in society at this point. Now to the field tonight. Ramon Foster, ankle out tonight, starting guard. D'Angelo Williams out again, second game. And Jericho Cotri with the Steelers last year, now with the Panthers, is out as well. Mike Tomlin, still the third youngest coach in the league, despite being the head man for eight seasons in Pittsburgh. And Ron Rivera, last year's coach of the year, leading this team to a 12 and four mark in his fourth season as the head coach in Carolina. Carolina won the toss. They had preferred Graham Gano with a 79 percent touchback rate. That's the best over that period of time that you just saw. Sending it to the Garrett Blunt's direction but most likely into and through the end zone and that is the case right here. And so the Pittsburgh Steelers will start from the 20, and here are their starters. Ben Roethlisberger, Miami Redhawks. Le'Veon Bell, Michigan State. Will Johnson, West Virginia. Antonio Brown, Central Michigan. Marcus Wheaton, Chandler High School. Heath Miller, Virginia. Kelvin Beecham, Southern Methodist University. Cody Wallace, Texas A&M. Marquise Pouncey, Lakeland Senior High. David DiCastro, Stanford. Marcus Gilbert, University of Florida. And so the Steelers now start with three receivers set to the right. Bell is the running back. And a little swing pass to Antonio Brown. And Brown, their top receiver for a game of five. Tackled by Antoine Quezon. So Ben Roethlisberger picked in the first round back in 2004. Steeler record for touchdown passes. Also gets sacked a ton of times, but a little less over the past couple of years and throwing fewer interceptions since Todd Haley came in as the offensive coordinator a couple of seasons back. And you've got a flag. Well, we've got a, a flag before the snap. Mike Tomlin barking something out toward Ron Torbert, the referee. Before the timeout was called, illegal substitution by the offense, 12 players in the huddle. It's a five-yard penalty, still second down. Pittsburgh is not charged with the timeout. They still have three timeouts remaining. Marcus Wheaton was that 12th guy, so they save a timeout. But it costs them five, and it will make it second down and 10 now. Just not allowed to put 12 guys in that huddle and try and take advantage of what the defense can react to. Normally a 12 man call is on the defense and this time this is Bell with a nice hole and he exploits it and takes it out to the 31 yard line tackled by Cole Lair gain of 11 in the first down. Watch how slowly Le'Veon Bell goes to help set up these blocks. They're going to come across the formation and he's just going to take his time like a veteran running back and not many people can do it. But we were talking to Marquise Pouncey, their outstanding center. And he said, boy, what a difference it makes for offensive linemen to have a little time to make those double teams work. Now Roethlisberger, play action. And it's covered beautifully as A.J. Klein tackles Heath Miller. And let's take a look at that Carolina D. Charles Johnson, offensive of the hospital. Colin Cole, Iowa. Star up in the lake, University of Utah. Wes Horton, Southern Cal. A.J. Klein, Iowa State University. Luke Keekley, Boston College. Thomas Davis, D, University of Georgia. Antoine Kaysen, University of Arizona. Roman Harper, Roll Tide. Thomas Deku, Glen Cove Elementary. Melvin White, University of Louisiana. Rebuilt secondary, but a tough front seven as Bell takes it out to the 40-yard line, a little bit short of the first down. It'll be third and one for the Steelers. David Castro right here and Pouncey right here. Watch what the patience does for these guys. They get up into the next level. Klein kind of runs himself out of position and you see him, he just kind of hops around a little bit and lets those blocks take hold much lighter this year than what he was a season ago and coming out of college is Le'Veon Bell. And I think it's uh, added a dimension to his game. 
And now Roethlisberger is going to have to take a timeout. They were trying to make four or five changes before the third down and short two. So Ben this time does get the timeout. Todd Haley, the offensive coordinator, of course, much ado made of that when it happened a couple of years ago. Bruce Arians let go, went to Indianapolis, took over for Chuck Pagano, who got sick, became coach of the year, and now, by the way, is doing a pretty good job with the Arizona Cardinals. He's done all right since he left Pittsburgh. He sure has. But, you know, this is a Pittsburgh offense that really has two completely different looks. They can go into a power formation and add some tight ends and add Will Johnson, the fullback, or they can spread you out. And sometimes I wonder if they don't get a little confused themselves as to which look is better for them. But we asked Tomlin about it, and he said no, because uh, we feel like that it's good to have uh, sort of two ways to beat you. And they'll mix in some no huddle tonight as well. But after the timeout here, they set up for a third down and two. Bell flanking Roethlisberger in the backfield. And he gives it to Bell. Swings to the outside and picks up the first down. So Bell getting three. Keekley making the tackle. It's another Pittsburgh first down on the game's opening drive. Here's the matchup. Defensive MVP Luke Keekley. And he's got to try and go catch Le'Veon Bell. But this weight loss has really helped him because now he has that added step of speed to the outside. So can he work inside as well as anybody and as much as anybody? But now it has that extra step getting the edge. From the 43. Then to the right, and then it's dropped. It is dropped by the... Fullback Will Johnson. Second down and 10. Ron Rivera played in the Super Bowl with those great 1985 Chicago Bears. Part of that unbelievable defense was an assistant in Chicago. Left there, went to San Diego, became the defensive coordinator there. And that led to Jerry Richardson hiring him four seasons ago as the head coach here. Second and 10. Thing on the ground. This is Blunt, LeGarrette Blunt, who was with New England last year, taking it to the 46 yard line. Klein and Keekley are in on the tackle, setting up a third and seven for the Steelers. A bit of a new grouping there for the Pittsburgh Steelers. LeGarrette Blunt comes in along with fullback Will Johnson and tight end Matt Spate. They want to see how Carolina's defense is going to react, but now comes the issue when you play Carolina. Now all the pass rushers get their opportunity at third and seven. They don't blitz that much. Three guys with their hands on the ground and they rush four and Roethlisberger protected well but the pass is batted down. So after a couple of first downs they're stopped here fourth and seven and Carolina will get the ball. I tell you this K1 short has really been playing well as of lately not only getting sacks and pressure on the quarterback but here getting his hands up they think he is going to be an outstanding young player Brad Wing in his first year as the Steelers punter will send it down to Philly Brown but uh, not until they walk off five yards for a full start prior to the snap false start offense number 51 five yard penalty Still fourth down. And so Mike Tomlin will watch his defense come out shortly. Cam Newton putting the helmet on, ready for action. He missed opening day in Tampa. Derek Anderson led them to that win because of a rib injury. But came back last week to beat Detroit here. And Wings kick is a wobbly one. A fair catch is called for made in the 20-yard line by Philly Brown. So here comes Cam Newton and the Panther offense in Charlotte on an 80 degree night. Sunday Night Football brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Without a heart, it's just a machine by Nissan. Innovation that excites by Bud Light. Stay in the game and drink responsibly. And by McDonald's, official sponsor of the NFL. I'm loving it. That's the Carolina's Aviation Museum here in Charlotte. The miracle on the Hudson. 
exhibit is currently on display. I wonder what Captain Sullenberger thinks when he looks at that craft. Jonathan Stewart is the running back at the 20 yard line. They start with a play fake and good protection and a good gain on first down to the number one draft choice, Kelvin Benjamin, the 6'5 rookie out of Florida State. And that's good for a gain of 18. 6'5 and about 240 pounds. We used to call those guys offensive linemen back when I played. Pretty incredible to see a that guy that big. You'll remember when he played for Florida State, he caught the game-winning touchdown with just a few seconds remaining against Auburn to win it all. Already his ninth reception of the season. He scored one touchdown. Now they hand the ball off to Jonathan. Oh, they don't. They fake it to him and then throw to the right side. Good play fake. They, everybody, including me, as Philly Brown makes the catch. He, like Benjamin, is a rookie free agent. Played his college ball at Ohio State. Cam Newton getting to be a better and better ball handler. Look how long that ball stayed into the gut of Jonathan Stewart and then pulled it out and was Double able to sword. complete it Double to sword. the outside to Philly Brown. They've had some changes at wide receiver tonight due to injury. And over the offseason as well, Steve Smith no longer a Panther after being here for many years that's a gain of nine that's philly brown let's take a look at this carolina offense which is clicking right now cam newton harvard university jonathan stewart the university of oregon mike toward douglas county high school kelvin benjamin the florida state jason avant michigan greg olson the u byron bell greenville texas amini silatholu midwestern state ryan khalil university of southern california fernando velasco georgia nate chandler ucla Velasco, a stealer last year, took over when Marquise Pouncey got hurt on opening day. And did a pretty good job at center as Jonathan Stewart takes it to the 38-yard line for a first down. So Cam Newton drafted number one out of Auburn in 2011. Has only missed one game, that because of the rib injury. Also had ankle surgery in the offseason 65 touchdown passes and 28 runs for touchdowns and on third down uh, if you're looking for somebody to run the ball it's normally going to be him yeah, and he, despite the ribs hey, and the ankle and all the different things he's got going on he has a rib protector on makes him look like robocop out there now from the 38 and they set up a screen to the left side. Jonathan Stewart with blocking, and that's a first down. He takes the ball inside the 25-yard line. Jason Worlds came in and really laid a lick on Newton, a little slow, and coming back to the line of scrimmage with Carolina buzzing right now. Coming with the blitz here, and Cam Newton has the perfect play called. Lawrence Timmons called on the blitz and coming up, and then, oh my gosh, it was Silatolu, I think. It really laid a block out there to spring Jonathan Stewart. At the 24-yard line, they've run five plays, four of them through the air. Newton is 4-4 for 52 yards. Mike Tolbert is the running back in this set, and Newton is going to take a timeout. He's a little gimpy as he starts to come toward the sideline after that hit. So he needs a breather here halfway through the first quarter. Don't miss a moment of Sunday Night Football this season with NBC Sports Live Extra. Take the game with you anywhere, online and on tablet. In Charlotte now, Cam Newton had to call a timeout. He got hit by Worlds, went to the turf, came to the sideline, threw a couple of passes. And check him out. Now as he restarts this drive from the 24-yard line, and the ball is handed off to Mike Tolbert, their big back, picks up two yards. Tackled by Timmons. Let's go back to the world's hit on Newton after he threw the screen pass. Of course, you know about the left ankle. That's the one that had the surgery, and here comes the hit. Kind of tough to tell from there, but once he got up and limped to the sideline, he really got something. A little more blitzing out of Pittsburgh tonight early on than we've seen. I think there's a little level of frustration. There. Second down and eight from the 22-yard line. And Newton's going to go for six, and it's incomplete. 
Avant down there along with Burson. Let's take a look at that Pittsburgh defense. Cameron Hayward, the Ohio State. Steve McClendon, Troy University. Cam Thomas, University of North Carolina. Jason Worlds, Carter at Ramblers. Ryan Shazier, the Ohio State University. Lawrence Timmons, Florida State. Jarvis Jones, Georgia. Cortez Allen, the Citadel. Troy Polamalu, University of Southern California. Mike Mitchell, Ohio University. Ike Taylor, Louisiana Lafayette. Shazier was their number one draft choice. He's number 50. Played at Ohio State. Third down, eight now. Four man rush. On the move. Tip and incomplete. Intended for Benjamin. That's Cortez Allen covering on the play. So the only thing that slowed Carolina down was Newton getting hit hard, having to take the timeout. Now it's fourth and eight. There we go. Here's Kelvin Benjamin, the young draft pick. Cortez Allen covering him, and he makes a nice move back to the ball, but just can't hang on to it. And you see a little bit of the Steelers blitz where they're going to have about seven guys up there, blitz five of them, drop the rest of them in coverage. You try to figure out which five is coming. 40 yard attempt for Graham Gano. And there are your first points of the game. Coming with 6.40 to go in the opening quarter in Charlotte, Carolina 3, Pittsburgh nothing. Well, tomorrow, last season's number one new show is back. James Spader returns on the blacklist tomorrow. 10 Eastern and Pacific, 9 Central and Mountain, right here on NBC. Love that show. Didn't <laughs> miss it once last year. Season opener tomorrow night. Meanwhile, week three. At least the final game on a Sunday of week three tonight in Carolina as Gano kicks off and has his second touchback. Le'Veon Bell. Second year. Interesting thing with him is you break down the numbers, 85% of his runs are between the tackles highest among active running backs and well above the league average. One of those classic three down backs he can block and pass protection. He is an excellent receiver now that he's lost some weight. Very difficult to cover on the outside and has shown a little speed getting out around the corner now. League average for a back on between the tackles about 60%. This time he tries to go between the tackles, but the, the defensive tackles will take care of him right there. The whole defense in the middle for a loss of three, second and 13. If you want to be patient, well, here's the reason you don't. You get a little penetration up the field like Kwan Short does here. Picks off the fullback, Will Johnson coming across, and you end up with a loss. Second and 12, the ball at the 18. Roethlisberger with a little flip and Bell will cut it back the other way keeping the play alive flags come in a pair of them for the moment he gets into the 28 yard line and it's going to be on Antonio Brown so it's going to be against Pittsburgh taking it back referee Ron Torbert has been in the league as a uh, side judge for the last few seasons his first year as a referee. Holding, offense, number 84, 10-yard penalty, replay second down. What's crazy about it is it was completely on the other side of the field, and then all of a sudden, I think in the last minute, Antonio Brown realized that Le'Veon Bell was coming back across. Maybe a little, uh, a little help for the official by Antoine Kaysen, but um, I think it was a good call. And it sets up a second and 13. And it's dropped, and that's Bell clearly just trying to look around. There's another flag down. Flag down just about at the line of scrimmage. I think they got him for another hold. Holding by the offense. Number 53. That penalty is declined. We go to the play. 
third down. And it's Marquise Pouncey. Clearly one of the great matchups in this game. Marquise Pouncey, multiple Pro Bowl against Luke Keekley, the defensive MVP, and got called on that one. Some of our rodeo friends in Texas might have been <laughs> proud of that one. Camp roping. We're down there next week for the Cowboys Saints game on Sunday night. Third and 13. And a quick toss. And that's Brown, and he gets swallowed up at the 24 yard line. So Brown cut to the inside. Got a couple of initial blocks. Roethlisberger wanted another flag here. So it states his case to one of the officials, and the clock will tick down to five minutes as the punting unit comes in. Brad Wing with the second punt of the night. Todd Haley is not going to let Ben Roethlisberger take big shots in those third and long situations. And Philly Brown's going to let it go. And will bound out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Newton back to work with Carolina up 3 nothing early. You've seen the bulky padding around Cam Newton's midsection. Well, this is what he wore last week and what he told me he'd wear tonight to protect that fractured rib. It starts with this circumference rib pad that is a hard shell on the outside and soft on the inside. It's something he's worn throughout his career, but here's what he's added. These custom molded hard shells on either side. And if you look closely at this third layer, this shirt, it's got this strong bubble-like uh, bubble wrap like technology and that disperses the force of a hit and he said putting this whole mix, mix together has been like a science project Al. Thank you Michelle you can pick up that uh, outfit at your nearby Armani exchange. Yeah Michelle with a nice manicure down there too. <laughs> From the 36 in HD. And Jonathan Stewart will go next to nowhere in fact tackled behind the line of scrimmage. You know John Madden always said if you have two injuries one definitely supersedes the other. So we asked Cam the other day which is is it the ankle that bothers you more or the ribs he says I'm not going to tell you. They're not going to tell you. No he wasn't going to help anybody out there but he said yeah, and it took him a little while to get going in that game last week the first that he had played he said in practice you're like a diamond you know nobody can touch you but in a game it's just the opposite everybody wants to take your head off. Somebody. Second and 11 from the 35 yard line. Good protection off play action. Short pass underneath and good coverage by Timmons on Jonathan Stewart. So, you know, the transition that Chris talked about at the open with the Pittsburgh defense getting a little old and a little slow, and they keep bringing in new guys. And now you got Lawrence Timmons. Of course, you have Polamalo and Taylor been there for 12 years, but now. This is the guy with the uh, the speaker in his helmet and kind of the, the key to the defense. Yeah, and he's trying to work with Ryan Shazier, the young draft pick opposite of him, and he's trying to do basically what other people, Larry Foote and people did for him, which is teach him this very complicated defense, which Dick LeBeau said really takes you about three years. Very rare a new linebacker comes in here and starts as a rookie. So as folks there grew up in Florence, South Carolina, third down and 11. And the pass is caught on the run, but stops shy of the first down as Gay comes in to tackle Jason Avant, the longtime former Philadelphia Eagle, and that'll make it fourth down. Well, so far, this game is going very well for the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Carolina Panthers have not yet been able to get a running game going, so maybe check the box for the Pittsburgh Steelers on that one. And they're being forced to throw the ball, which has to be the goal anytime you play against Carolina. They can't get the ball in Antonio Brown's hands enough, so he'll run back the punt. Norton sends it toward the sideline, collected at the 17. And all things considered, a decent run back. He really had no room to roam. And brings it back to the 25 yard line. 238 left in the quarter, 3 0. Greg Hardy gone. Those are the three guys replacing him. Horton on the bottom started. Ely's in there right now. A rookie second round pick out of Missouri. Addison comes in in passing situations. In fact, Addison had a great second half last week. Had two and a half sacks against Detroit. Which matched his season total from a year ago. From the 25. And the flag is down. And Roethlisberger going deep and adjusting, and his flag is down there as well. 
is Darius Hayward Bay. So you have a flag at the line of scrimmage. You got Johnson putting the pressure on that time. And part of the reason he was able to put the pressure on is he came across the line. And the way the Steelers are reacting, they think both fouls are going to be against Carolina. First for offside and the second for pass interference. Crowd now senses that. There are two fouls on the play, both by the defense. Offside by the defense. That penalty is declined. Pass interference. Defense number 21. That penalty is accepted. Spot foul. Automatic first down. It's Thomas Deku. First year here, only with the Falcons. Remember Darius Hayward Bayal, the guy who was drafted uh, seventh overall by the Raiders because of his pure speed. Well, he laid a little bit on him out there. And when that ball was left to the inside, Deku just grabbed him. Big play for the Steelers. Turns out to be a 42-yard penalty. And now Roethlisberger hands the ball to Bell, and Bell swings to the outside. It's taken out of bounds after a game of six by Melvin White. Pretty nice job on that play initially by Cody Wallace. May have lost the linebacker a bit. Cody Wallace filling in here for Ramon Foster, who hurt his ankle on Wednesday in practice this week. The Le'Veon Bell just finds a way to work with whoever's in front of him. Second and four. And dancing around, and Bell cuts it back. Nice move. Picks up the first down to the 22-yard line. Wow, that was some cut there. A little Marcus Allen-like on that one. Just kind of slowly working it. Now, yeah, and then zip. Runs right by Thomas Deku. He's having a tough series so far on this one, but I don't know who would have made that tackle. That's one of the things about moving a little more slowly and under control. You can make those kind of cuts. Great comparison. And he showed you how much he runs inside, and tonight running a lot more outside. He's already carried seven times for 41 yards. And Ben, under pressure, can't escape. Sacked at the 29-yard line. And there is Addison with those two and a half last week coming in in pass rush situations and putting him down. Working against Kelvin Beecham, Mario Addison is a blur. I, right now, I know Charles Johnson usually is considered their best pass rusher after Greg Hardy. But when you watch the tape of Mario Addison, you would say, who is their best? Who gives them your best chance for a sack? It's him. Fourth year guy out of Troy, same school that produced DeMarcus Ware. Swings to the outside to Brown, and Brown is out of bounds after a short game. Benet Ben Wickery covering it. We like that name, don't we? Oh, we love it. I mean, he used to be the chairman of the Federal Reserve. Now he's playing a defensive back. Oh, there you go. Very good. You know, it is interesting talking to Ben Roethlisberger, though, about Antonio Brown. He says, I know Percy Harvin gets all this attention, but there is nobody better in the National Football League in the open field with the ball than Antonio Brown. Gain of four on that play, third and 12 now from the 24. Brown roaring is one. 15 seconds to go in the quarter. Ben under pressure again. Hit from behind as he throws. And again, that was Addison. The pass is incomplete. Arm was coming forward to the fourth down. This is relatively close now. See if this hand, does it ever go forward on the throw? It's empty going forward, at least initially, and that would be a fumble in that situation. Nothing. Interesting. The 42-yard attempt here now. Sean Sweezum has made his last 20 attempts. And that's Blackjack, 21. With seven seconds to go in the opening period in Charlotte. 3-3. So Ron Rivera, he had a, a chance to challenge the Roethlisberger throw, which could have been ruled a fumble, but it was recovered by Le'Veon Bell. It wouldn't have been a first down, but it would have been enough 
to make it a shorter field goal. So there's no sense in challenging a play where even if you win the challenge, it's not going to do you any good. Right. And Roethlisberger going over things with Haley on the sideline is Sean Sweezum will kick off. Brenton Person is back to receive for Carolina. And he's going to get a chance to run this back from the goal line. This is Philly Brown who is back there with him. And Philly Brown will take it to the 20 yard line and gets tackled there. We have one second remaining in the first quarter. Next week, we go to Arlington. How about the Cowboys today? Down 21 to nothing to St. Louis and coming from behind to win the game. And New Orleans got off the schneid with a victory today at home against Minnesota. Football night starts at 7 o'clock. There are today's results. It's Breeze, it's Romo, it's the Saints, it's the Cowboys next Sunday night. And Romo had that pick six early, right? And then came all the way back. Pretty impressive and one the Cowboys really needed. And the quarter will end here on a Jonathan Stewart three-yard run. So we played one. In Carolina with a score 3 3, and Sunday night football continues after these messages. James Taylor, letting you know where we are as tonight's aerial coverage is being brought to you by Geico. Beautiful shot of downtown Charlotte. North Carolina, home of the Panthers, who came into the league as an expansion team in 1995. This is their 20th season. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, and Michelle Sequoia. Ben Roethlisberger looking on from the Pittsburgh sideline as Cam Newton goes to work on a second down and seven from his own 24-yard line. And off the play fake, they grab him by the left arm, and down he goes, and there's a flag that comes in. So Newton trying to escape. Cameron Hayward had him by the left arm and then the flag came in. Two flags in fact. One in the offensive backfield and one up at the 31 yard line. So a couple of penalties here. Ron Torbert has had a busy evening to this point. They're fouls by both teams on the play. Holding. Defense. Number 28. Holding. Offense. Number 35. Those fouls offset. We'll replay second down. Well, we talked about Pittsburgh rebuilding its defense, but it always, for years, it's always started with their linebackers and did again in the draft this year. Yeah, it really did. Ryan Shazier is a guy that fits in perfectly. You know, typically the defensive line for Pittsburgh is sort of workmanlike and they have to try and keep everybody off those linebackers those linebackers are typically first round draft picks and they're supposed to make all kinds of plays and on some of these great defenses they've had five of the last 10 years Dick LeBeau had the number one ranked defense in the NFL never lower than 13th and now they're going through a little transition with it. the great 77 year old defensive coordinator on second and seven it's complete to Greg Olson, his first catch of the night up to the 29 yard line. Take a look at the investments that they've made. Worlds, second round pick in 10. She's here, number one this year. Timmons, number one in 07. And Jarvis Jones was the number one pick last year. I was talking to some of the coaches about these linebackers, and they said, you know, a guy like Shazier, I said, what's the hardest part of that? And he said, really coverage, because you have to know where your help is behind you. You have to understand fully the entire concept of the defense before you can really play fast with them. 56 years in the league for the Hall of Famer LeBeau. Now Newton buys time, throws, and it's a low throw, and it is incomplete. Intended for Olsen there. It'll be fourth and one. Nice job there by Jason Worlds. They had this little play going. They're going to try and get it. 
to Burson coming across the formation, but he's going to bang into him before he can get in the flat. And then Cam Newton had to try and force it down the field where he really did not want to go on that third and one. Now Brown sets up at his own 20 yard line. Brad Nortman sends it skyward. And it was a blooming kick. And Brown backs up and collects it at the six yard line. A flag is thrown. And another one comes down. And he goes out of bounds at the 14. This is a 65 yard punt. And a really bad penalty on the part of the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're going to be backed up now inside the 10. I think my highest fine as a head coach would be on special teams anytime. <laughs> Just don't block them. I mean, you've got one of the great open field guys in the game today. Just give him a chance to make a miss. During the return, illegal block in the back by the return team, number 57. That's half the distance from the spot of the foul. Pittsburgh's ball, first down. Half the distance plus 65 yards. Early second quarter, the five in Carolina. Luke Kinkley, number nine overall pick, first rounder, played his college ball at Boston College, two years in the league, defensive player of the year last year. Lawrence Taylor won it as a rookie and a second year guy. And the only other guy to win it in his first two seasons would be J.J. Watt. So it's some pretty good company for a guy who anchors what was the number two defense in the league last year, second only to the Seahawks. Yeah, how about this trifecta? ACC Defensive Player of the Year, Rookie of the Year in the NFL, and then Defensive MVP. Not bad. And the Cincinnati boy. There you go. From the seven-yard line. Maybe on Bell. Takes it to the eight yard line. What impresses you the most about Keekley? Well, for one, he's a dynamic leader of this team and is still a very good guy. But I think his feet, you know, he gets himself in position, I think, better than any linebacker right now. A lot of times when you're trying to make a tackle, you're going to be off balance. And you'll see right before he gets set to strike, all of a sudden his feet pop right back underneath his shoulder pads and he can strike and he does not like people to fall forward. He can torch that ball carrier's body backwards. Second and nine. And Ben will dump it off over the middle to Blunt, but there's a flag for a false start. So there's no play here. Another penalty on Pittsburgh. This will be the fifth against them. Before the ball was snapped. Oh, false start. Offense. Number 68. It's half the distance to the goal. Still second down. Kelvin Beecham, your left tackle. And you know, this is really danger time now for this Pittsburgh Steelers offense. So far, Marcus Gilbert, the right tackle, has done a pretty good job against Charles Johnson out there, but he's gotten a little help, and Gilbert the last couple of games has struggled some. So he is going to have the spotlight on him in this one. But you see Will Johnson standing right beside him. He's going to help on Johnson. No, he's not. Second to 13. They give the ball to Blunt. LeGarrett Blunt puts the shoulder down and takes it for a first down. So the backup to Bell. Tackled by Deku. Blunt played his college ball at Oregon. Picked up as a free agent 15 yard game. Well, here's what happens. You try to pass rush too soon. You run yourself right out of the play. Gilbert's just going to run him right by and then LeGarrett Blunt able to take advantage of what Carolina and what Charles Johnson wanted to do there, which is go get a safety. Once the guy scored four touchdowns for New England in the playoff game in January against New England. Bell is back in now and they give it to him and he gets surrounded and tackled for no game. You know, it's interesting to see the way they play it in the secondary. Antoine Kaysen is a guy that was with this coaching staff in San Diego, so he knows what they want to do defensively, and he has really come up with a lot of plays, gotten a lot of turnover so far this season, and has really become the number one player back there in the secondary. They don't spend a lot of money back there. They get a lot of free agents, and. People that are cut by other teams and rely on that pass rush to get home. And now Ben has to take another timeout. So that's the second they've used here second in the first Pittsburgh. half. At Carolina this defense, of course, Ron Rivera, that's his pedigree, but he brought Sean McDermott in 
from Philadelphia. McDermott was the understudy for many years to the great Jimmy Johnson, the defensive coordinator for the Eagles. And then uh, well, he fell out of favor in Philadelphia and became uh, in the crosshairs of a lot of the Eagles fans, but he's resurrected his career down here. And who was his college teammate? Mike Tomlin. How yeah. about that? Those two guys played together, and William and Mary, and I'm sure Sean's going to be very proud of showing off that six-pack, which I'm sure he still has today, but uh, those two guys have done awfully well. And Mike Tomlin was singing Sean's praises. He said, I have so much respect for him. Of course, the former defensive coordinator himself, Tomlin, of Minnesota. Still good friends, those two. Second and ten. They split Bell out in this set. You've got five receivers. They throw it to Brown. He cuts to the inside. And then back up field and gets to the 23 yard line. Gain of four yards, third down and six now. You're going to see a lot of these short, quick passes out of Ben Roethlisberger because of the pass rush that Carolina has. But you know, it's one of the things, of course, Todd Haley brought here. They wanted to start protecting Ben Roethlisberger, who was having trouble making it through the season. But also, some of the greatest plays we ever saw in football came from Ben Roethlisberger under pressure, moving around and making some kind of big play. Third down and six from the 23-yard line. And Ben airs it out. The older over the shoulder grab is Brown along the sideline. Boy, he is something. Antonio Brown on a third down and six. Good for 29 yards. One of the things that Carolina likes to do is do these delay blitzes. In other words, look like they're going to drop back. But Le'Veon Bell was right there. Ben got the ball out of his hand quickly. And I just can't say enough good things about Antonio Brown. He was second in yards, second in receiving, I think, a season ago. Two-time MVP out of the last three years of the Steelers. Great, great player. Take the bell, and then it's Miller, the tight end, taking it to the 30-yard line. You can hear the heat chance. The Steelers travel better than anybody in the league. They and the Green Bay Packers bringing fans in from the hometown. Yeah, just a quick little run fake, and Keekly frozen for a minute by that. Right now, the Steelers got it going on, and they've got it spread out. Here comes that other look we talked about. They ran it early. Now they're going to the spread. Spread and no huddle. From the 31. And they run the play to Wheaton this time. Same play they ran to Brown, and that's going to pick up seven yards. Meanwhile, Brown has already caught five passes tonight, and this is the 19th consecutive game in which Brown has made at least five catches. Watch Pouncey here go try and get Luke Keekley. That's his assignment all night. He gets a, gets him off his feet, and then Keekley still kind of comes back and gets in on the play. So the Steelers pressing the pace, going no huddle. On second down and three, big hole. Closes in a hurry, but not until Bell picks up the first down. Keekley makes the tackle again. The Steelers are looking for their first touchdown in almost eight quarters. Yeah, and they have got it going on right now. And I think Ben likes this part of the game plan when he's out there. And I believe this is when he's calling his own plays out there. He has Le'Veon Bell off to the side. Sometimes you get teams spread out. You can start popping a few runs on them. This is the ninth play of a drive that started back at the seven. And the pass is incomplete. Justin Brown, the intended receiver, but thrown away. White covering on the first second down. Yeah, I don't know exactly what happened that time with Justin Brown, but he never really acted like he thought he was going to get the ball. He just sort of came to a jogging stop, never found the football at all. Eight and a half, left and a half. With the game tied at three. Five wide. Roethlisberger throws. Miller makes the catch. He gets tackled at the 14-yard line by Godfrey. And that will set up a third down and five. Yeah, Steelers always travel well, and you can tell by the heat when it's a play. But one of the things I really like about watching Carolina is the way they play these matchup zones. It may be a zone defense, but you come into Luke Keekley or Thomas Davis' zone, they're going to be all over you. 
third and five. Brown on the outside. Can he get the first down? He's going to be stopped a little bit shy. Kaysan is able to bounce him out of bounds. Roethlisberger telling Tomlin that's how far we have to go. He actually probably has a little bit further, but I'm sure Ben wants to stay in the game. Yeah, I'm not sure Antonio Brown exactly knew where this first down marker was because you drop your shoulder the slightest little bit here, you're going to get it. Oh, I see. He tried to come over and look at this throw. Didn't even get his hands on the laces. That's how quickly they're trying to get that ball out. So it's fourth down and one. There's Ben. He's going to make it narrow, narrower than it really is to try to influence Tomlin's decision here. In the meantime, they're going to call for a measurement. <laughs> Some people try to stretch the truth <laughs> and tries to shrink the truth. Right. Well, Tomlin will see exactly what he has here. Well, they waved off the measurement. Ball is short of the line to gain. It's fourth down. Yeah, I think that what the Steelers want to see is exactly how far do we have to go. And Torbert said, wait a second. You're not even close. Not close enough to measure anyway. So now they bring Blunt into the game. They will line up to go for it on fourth down and a short yard. There's that power formation with two tight ends and the fullback Will Johnson in. And Roethlisberger will take it himself over right guard and appears to have picked it up. The other line is unofficial. You already knew that. I've been telling you that for five, ten years. I heard that rumor. Yeah, that was right. Uh, he has the first down. You always say you run to the bubble wherever there's a linebacker stack there, so he found it. But for Ben Roethlisberger, he took one unbelievable shot last week from Courtney Upshaw that he said he is still feeling out there on the field. Said it felt like somebody hit him with a baseball bat in the chest. So now it's first and goal. Bell is the running back. Roethlisberger throws, and it's caught by Justin Brown. And he'll take the ball to the four-yard line. So the Pittsburgh Steelers trying to score for the first time since late in the first half against Cleveland on opening day, trying to score a touchdown. They came out in that first half against Cleveland, and they looked like they were going to be world champions. They just couldn't have played a better half. And since then, they just have been unable to stick the thing in the end zone. They have now started getting them stretched very wide, this Carolina defense, with some of these quick screens. Let's see if they can work it inside with a run. We would figure Carolina very tough in the red zone, tough all over the field defensively. And Bell oh. cannot get out of the backfield. Flag is down. Star Latulale stopped him. Clock stopped at 6.02. Where it had five accepted penalties against Pittsburgh and one on Carolina, which was the 42 yard pass interference call. Illegal motion by the offense. Number 15 is lined up on the line of scrimmage. And went in motion. That penalty is declined. It's third down. They'll take the down. That's that's Justin Brown, number 15. Right here is Starla Tulele and Kelvin Beecham just unable to reach him. Too athletic to reach inside. Big play for him and big play for the Steelers now. So third and goal. Miller sets in the slot. Carolina almost jumps. Roethlisberger throws and turning around is Wheaton. Look what I found. Wheaton for the touchdown. Melvin White with the coverage. I don't think Melvin White can believe this. He played this perfectly. Pinned him right into the sideline. Nowhere to go. And Ben just makes a perfect throw. You can't do coverage better than that. Just couldn't find the football. And a huge catch. Yes, sir. I think he got both feet down. Let's double check it. That toes down, don't you think? I think it is, but New York will look at it as they always do. The, the scoring play. The deal is that the runner stepped out of bounds, did not reestablish in bounds before catching the ball. Whoa. Pass. So he's out of bounds before. He comes back in to make the catch. 
That's a killer penalty and makes it fourth down. Oh, just as he was coming back to the ball, I think that left foot may have stepped on the line. Well, it's close. I can't I can't tell from there. Well, you the got official is right there, but that official He's, has his hands in the air. Right, he signals touchdown. The call comes from somebody else. And, and there's the other official who throws his hat as if to indicate he stepped out of bounds before he made the catch. So it's fourth and goal. That's one of those plays, since it's not a scoring play, it's not reviewed. I mean, Tomlin could challenge it, but he's not going to win it. And squeeze him now and have to set up for a field goal. So Pittsburgh still can't find the end zone. This is a 24 yard attempt. And it does give Pittsburgh the lead. But they had the ball for eight minutes, 16 plays, but have to set up for three and lead six to three. Your four judges for this year? Tomorrow night. A lot of fun that show. Yep. They come up with some. Very good talent, but uh, I love how they do it where the coaches are actually competing against each other. You know, you got to try and get that best talent, turn the chairs around. A lot of fun. Good format. Kickoff is a bouncing ball fielded at the two by Philly Brown. And works his way to the 23 yard line. With five and a half remaining in the opening half. Carolina with the ball trailing by three. Sunday night selfies as we come back to Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte. Carolina starts this drive from the 23 yard line. And it's going to start with a sack. Wrapping him up is Steve McLinden, the nose tackle, the guy who supplanted uh, Casey Hampton, who did such great work over many years. This Steve McClendon is a player. I've been watching him now for a few weeks here. He's going against really an all-pro player and Ryan Khalil, and Khalil knew it. He knew that his arms were so long, he'd seen it on tape. He has the ability to fully extend, McClendon does, and then work his way around. That's exactly what happened. He came up with a big sack. Good player, Steve McClendon. Second and 17. They rush only three, eight back. And so Kane has a lot of time and winds up hitting Benjamin, the number one draft choice. Well, I tell you, they, they really cleaned house. Steve Smith gone after so many years. Brandon LaFell went to New England. Ted Ginn went to Arizona. They wiped out the whole receiver room and brought in Benjamin as the number one pick. They brought in Jericho Cotchery, who's hurt, not playing tonight. Jason Devon in Philadelphia. And of course, as you look at Dave Gettleman, they kept his main guy, Greg Olson, the tight end. No doubt about it. Greg Olson has been through quite an ordeal here lately, hasn't he? Yes, he has. His young son, it's third down and three. And speaking of Mr. Olson, there he is picking up the first down. Well, first of all, let's talk about Greg Olson, the football player. He's fantastic. You see the C on his chest, and he's a guy that has really been the go-to guy. I think Carolina was extremely lucky. The Bears were going through a transition. They ended up picking him up for a third-round draft pick, and he has clearly been the mainstay while these new receivers learn this offense. Deep drop and a screen set up here to Jonathan Stewart. He gets wrestled down at the 39. Mike Mitchell making the stop. So there you have the uh, the core four from last year, of course, headlined by Steve Smith, who might wind up in Canton someday. That's what they lost. The Steelers, meanwhile, Emmanuel Sanders went to Denver. Contrary came here. So Ben is saying, hey, wait a minute, you know, I paid the price too, but of course they kept Antonio Brown. Steve Smith had a day today. <laughs> what a game that was. Washington Philly second and five. And that pass is incomplete. One thing about the organization here is they, they, they kept in contact with Cam and told him exactly what they had in mind and exactly what they were doing every step of the way. 
Yeah, he said it was a leap of faith. Anytime you change out all your receivers and it wasn't much fun. Jericho Cotri not playing tonight, but he was Ben Roethlisberger's favorite guy in Pittsburgh. They were best of friends, scored 10 touchdowns, and he was allowed to get away. And Joe Richardson, an old receiver himself in the National Football League, saw a gym and took him. David Unitas in Baltimore, third down and five. And that is caught by Benjamin at the midfield strike, tackled there by Ike Taylor, first down. But what a catch this is. This is just a big 240 pound man taken away from Mike Taylor, who's a pretty big guy himself. But he locked onto that ball. So many of those balls get knocked out as a receiver. But look at the strength of this guy. And he is just going to be special. He's missed a few, but he has also made some of the most spectacular catches we've seen this year. And Cam uncorks one for a game of about nine. The flag is down. Brett Burson. Made the catch. Yeah, Byron Bell may get caught on this one. The left tackle. Out there working on Jarvis Jones. Jones started to get away, and I think he may have got him by the face mask. Personal foul, face mask, offense, number 77. It's a 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. Great move by Jarvis Jones coming here. Starts out, dips back inside, and Bell knew he was beat and just grabbed the face mask. Why not? Your quarterback has bad ribs, not going to give him a free shot. That's a big play in the game. 2.21 left in the half. Clock ticking down now. now. Byron Bell had to replace Jordan Gross, who retired. Really retired while he was still sort of at the top of his game. I know Carolina really wish they had him back, but they had to take Bell from right tackle where he's starting to figure that out over the left tackle. First and 25 now. Good protection. And then he swings it to the outside where it's hauled in by Philly Brown. And that takes us to the two minute warning it'll be second down and nine when play resumes with 155 remaining in the half six to three Steelers. Toyota halftime coming up Tony Romo rallying the Cowboys from 21 down the Seahawks beating the Broncos in overtime and Bob and Pines will weigh in on the first half from Charlotte North Carolina Beautiful skyline shot here. Uh oh. <laughs> It doesn't mean they're going to pull out their shots of us. <laughs> well, I hope not. <laughs> Second down and nine. Troy Polamalu doing his thing so spectacularly well for a dozen seasons. And Newton. He's going to take off and gets tackled as he gets to the sideline. And everybody wants a flag over there. Shazier is there. A couple of Steelers. Making sure he gets out of bounds. Interesting because Shazier at the very end of this play is going to kind of knee him out of bounds, mm -hmm. but I don't think he was out and he clearly wasn't trying to drop a shoulder or is almost trying to get out of the way. I thought that was a very good no call in a tough situation. Shazier can fly. He is about as fast a <laughs> linebacker as you will see, along with Thomas Davis on the other side for Carolina. Third and seven. And that pass is incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Cam Hayward that time goes into Cam Newton, and that's the second time tonight that Newton has come up hobbling. Cameron Hayward's having a ball game here. And Khalil is it looking like he's going to look off to the right. I think he was more worried about Lawrence Timmons, but Timmons was picked up by Trey Turner and Cam Newton took a shot there from Cameron Hayward. And Nortman to punt. Norton's last punt was 65 yards in the air. And there's a penalty on the other end of the play. This one is bouncing at the seven, and they can't stop it from going into the end zone. So Ben will take over at the 20 when we come back. Keep going. 
Sunday Night Football brought to you by Verizon. More live games than ever before with NFL Mobile by Kia Motors. Visit Kia.com to learn more and by Geico. 15 minutes to save you 50% on car insurance. Friday Night Lights all over the country. This is uh, just across the border. A couple of nights ago in South Carolina, Northwestern High School, and South Point. From the 20 now. Steelers last drive was 87 yards but resulted in only a field goal. And this is Bell for a gain of three. It's been eight quarters now since Pittsburgh has scored a touchdown. Yeah, but I tell you what, that last drive they put together in that spread offense was impressive, wasn't it? Took it off their own six or seven yard line and almost managed to score with it. And then on second down, hits Brown. He gets spun to the turf at the 38-yard line. Remember, Pittsburgh had to use two timeouts earlier in the half, so they're down to one, and the clock is down under a minute. From the 38. Roethlisberger. And contact, flag, two come in. Brown with Kaysan right there. And Antonio's already signaled a first down. Great job by Antonio Brown. Kaysen just simply did not get his head around, and if the receiver jumps back through the defender. Pass interference, defense, number 20. Top foul, automatic first down. See if he ever turns his head around. If not, this is an automatic foul. Contact before the ball got there is a receiver. It is a great weapon that you have. You always have the ability to stop, go back through the defender, and draw the call every time. Penalty worth 19 yards, 47 seconds left in the half. Roethlisberger, open man is Wheaton, and Wheaton takes the ball to the 27-yard line. Roethlisberger hustling the team up to the line of scrimmage, trying to save that last time out. And then we'll spike it right there. So it's second down with 33 seconds left in the half. Well, Ben is getting the ball out of his hand extremely quickly, not giving this Carolina pass rush a chance. And the more that they go no huddle, the more fatigue they get because they can't substitute in and out. Roethlisberger, 13 of 20 now for 119 yards. Brown scored seven for 69. They go five wide. Pass underneath, caught by Justin Brown. He'll take it to the 25-yard line. Well, there we go. Keekley goes down. Now we got a little action between DeCastro and Keekley. Flag comes in. That'll stop the clock at 24. Well, Keekley with a little extracurricular at the end of that, I think as much as anything, to try and keep him from getting up and just keep that clock running. And somebody responded to that. Right, you got DeCastro trying to get up quickly, Keekley trying to keep him down, keep the clock moving. And the officials will huddle and assess the penalty, as they always do. You know, you love it when your guys defend your players, but not at the expense of 15 yards. After the play was over, dead ball, personal foul, number 66 of the offense. It's a 15-yard penalty. The down counts. It's third down. First of all, you're going to see Keekley come up. A little extra right here at the end of the play. Try and rip the ball out. And here comes DeCastro and then Keekley with an Academy Award. Yep. Oh, I see you a little bit there. Now Justin Brown really was the one that pushed Keekley in the side of his helmet. Keekley pushed back. So I'd say they were playing football. Double whammy, personal foul. Down counts. It's third and 21 now. And Roethlisberger will dump it over the middle. This is Bell. And Bell will get tackled to the 28-yard line. They have one timeout. It's going to be fourth down now. And Tomlin looking at the clock. 
14 seconds. Fourth down. So he's got to send the field goal unit in. Sometimes it's just so great having a veteran quarterback. All you wanted to do was get back in field goal range. That penalty took them out. That play put them back in. And there's your final timeout for Pitt. So the Steelers let the clock run down, took the timeout with three seconds to let Carolina have nothing on the other end of this. 45 yard attempt. Sleazen looking for his 23rd consecutive field goal. Bingo. So he has accounted for all nine points, but the Steelers have now not scored a touchdown in eight and a half quarters. But they go to the locker room of the lead. Nine to three, Pittsburgh coming up next. Try out a halftime first. These messages from your NBC station. Night football's Game Changers, brought to you by Bose, official sound of the NFL. The Pittsburgh Steelers come to town to meet the Panthers on Sunday Night Football. Ben under pressure, can't escape, and there is Addison putting him down. Wrapping him up is Steve McClendon. This Steve McClendon is a player. Bones, official sound of the NFL. Charlotte, North Carolina, act two, the buzz tonight thus far in a game that has featured four field goals. Pittsburgh's now gone eight straight quarters without a touchdown since the second quarter against Cleveland in the opener. Sweezum has made 23 straight, including three tonight. And the Panther offense, only five rushes, 10 yards in that first half. And of course, they're still minus D'Angelo Williams. Second straight game, he has been out, thigh injury. And Newton is not 100% with the ankle and the rib and all of that so they've had no running game Chris yeah and Jonathan Stewart is a little bit more of a power player as is Mike Tolbert so you haven't seen the explosive plays and I think you hit on a good point Cam Newton is a guy that typically if it's not going well can create on his own but because of the ankle because of the ribs he has not been getting out and running the ball in this game so far either in the Pittsburgh Steelers defensively had a terrific first half. Let's give them a little credit. Limited Carolina to 120 yards. You know, they came in as the 25th ranked scoring defense. And you knew Dick LeBeau would get them going. I, I kind of thought with all the young guys, maybe around midseason, they'd really start to get it going a little bit. A little more pressure tonight, and I think it's paying off. They really have sort of bottled up Cam Newton. And Sweezum starts the third quarter by moving it through the end zone. Talked a little bit about it, but the pass rush has been there tonight, and the Pittsburgh Steelers willing to bring those linebackers on occasion. And one of the things that you want to do against a mobile quarterback is bring at least five guys so you don't have those gaps where he can step up and through. And then they have somebody like Orion Shazier who can cover Greg Olson down the field one-on-one. -on -one. I think Dick LeBeau is going to be very happy with the growth of this defense here tonight. So they start with Stewart. And Dixon lines up as a fullback and they give it to Stewart. And Stewart with the best run of the night. They picked up only 10 yards in the first half. He breaks a couple of the tackles here. And he picks up 14 and we go to Michelle. Well, Ron Rivera's got to be happy with that because he told me at halftime, we've got to trust the one. We've got to try and commit to the run. He was upset that they weren't just trusting it. As far as Mike Tomlin, he said, we don't care how Carolina attacks us. He is intent on keeping them one-dimensional. And as far as not being able to get into the end zone in eight quarters, well, this time around, he credited Carolina's defense, Al. That's a good point because Carolina's been very tough. And obviously that Steeler defense. Turning in a masterful job to this point as the ball is handed off. And a flag comes in. That's Jonathan Stewart again after the 14 yard run. Holding. Offense. Number 77. 10 yard penalty. Replay first down. And that'll cost him 10 here. 
Shazier got hurt on that last play. Byron Bell with the penalty. Haven't heard much from Troy Polamalu so far in this game. Here he comes up and takes out all the blockers and basically allows his teammate Lawrence Timmons to come up and make the play. But it is going to be interesting now if Ryan Shazier has an injury that is going to last throughout this half. So now they end up with Terrence Garvin in there to take his place. So she's here for the moment on the sideline. It's first down and 20. And the pass is incomplete, but a flag comes in. Benjamin, the intended receiver, Cortez Allen covering on the play. It was first and 20. And there is Shazier. Before the pass the was thrown, illegal contact, defense, number 28, five-yard penalty, automatic first down. Just, just a killer when your defense has the other team's offense first and 20, a five-yard penalty, but it's a first down. And here's how Shazier got hurt. Hmm. Yeah, friendly fire again. Lawrence Timmons fell right back on top of him. And now Sean Spence in to take over. Number 51, third-year linebacker from Miami. Swinging to the outside goes Mike Tolbert to the 35-yard line. Tackled there by Lawrence Timmons and another penalty. Trying to catch up to uh, last week's Chicago-San Francisco game. This no way. <laughs> you're, you're right. <laughs> Throw a flag on every play. That time, Polamalo got lost a little bit inside. You know, it's okay to take a chance every once in a while, but you can't lose containment on the play, and I think that's what happened to them there. A little different, a little edgier look in Carolina running game coming out here mm -hmm. in the second Holding. half. Offense, number 47. That's a 10-yard penalty. Replay first so That's two holding goals. That's Richie Brockle, the fullback, to go along with the bell penalty, and the offensive coordinator is Mike Shula, or son of Don. Calling the plays in from upstairs. Yeah, and he understands full well how this team wins football games. It's his job to not take a lot of chances, don't turn it over, allow his defense to do its thing. But when you start getting into all these penalties and long situations, that's when this offense is going to struggle. He's looking up at the big screen as it's first and 20 for his offense. Pressure put on, but Newton's going to escape and then get taken down by the left ankle by Sean Spence up at the 25-yard uh, line. Yeah, pretty consistently now. I think you're going to see what we call sort of a read blitz here. Sean Spence is going to come, and then when he sees Tolbert blocking, he'll just continue on. If Tolbert had released into the route there and recognized what it was, I think it would have been up to Spence to turn and run. Cam Newton now maybe starting to get into the game, thinking he's going to have to take this one on his own back and start making some plays. Second and 15. It's a three-man rush this time. That's enough pressure put on. It's incomplete for Kiesel, who was going to leave the team and then was brought back prior to training camp 13-year veteran defensive end, third and 15. Working against Nate Chandler, and just watch the power here. Brett Kiesel, I thought a week ago, of these defensive linemen, not the linebackers, that he was the most effective rushing the passer. I think he got to Arizona, and it looked like that he might sign out there, and that's when Pittsburgh called and said, nah, <laughs> come on back. Yeah. You know, maybe they were playing a little game and hoping they could hold him to week two, so they have to guarantee contracts. Who knows? And he's doing well. Meanwhile, the ball comes loose. It's ruled a fumble on the field. Jarvis Jones was able to get it out. And waiting for the signal, it is the Steelers football. Mike Tomlin knew all it took for his pass rushers to start making plays was to get into some third and longs. There they were, and it was Jarvis Jones came flying right through Byron Bell to make the play, and that's what we're talking about. Carolina is not the kind of team 
that can sit back in those long yardage situations. And I think that was Brett Kiesel who actually got his hand on the ball. Well, it came out without anybody touching. Mm -hmm. That was bizarre. That is the first takeaway for the Steelers this season. And it gives them a short field because they'll start at the 17 yard line. It's also the first turnover by the Panthers this year. Watch Jarvis Jones with his bull rush and he hits the elbow and that's what knocks the ball straight up in the air. Well, you look at all turnovers, so they're checking out in Gotham. And we'll be back to Charlotte in a minute. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. A fumble recovered by Pittsburgh. First down, Pittsburgh. Well, they looked at it, but it was very clear here that ball came out. Jason Worlds recovers it. They worked on Jones on the bench. Here's the play again. Jarvis well, Jones had a lot of respect for him as a football player. Ryan Khalil was talking about a few different times that he made plays 60 yards down the field after getting blocked, and he's going off to be looked at. Ball now with the 17, so a big defensive series here for Carolina. A two yard gain by Le'Veon Bell takes you through the 15 yard line. A.J. Klein makes the stop. Yeah, now this is the time that the Pittsburgh Steelers typically put people away. And this feels like a Steelers game, doesn't it? Low scoring in the first half. You kind of pound. You wait for the other team to make a mistake. Your defense makes a big play. Now, typically, the Steelers put you away, at least in the old days. Trying to get into the end zone here, and it's a four-yard gain as Bell will take the ball to the 11, and it'll be third down. Maybe on Bell just has such great vision and patience. Watch how he just sort of slowly comes in there. Right, what am I going to do? Set it up, and then when he tries to do it. He hits it hard, but watch Luke Keekley. He said all week in practice, I've been telling myself, slow down, slow down, slow down. Wait on him to make a move first. That's exactly what happened there. Third and four from the 12. Brown outside, Wheaton in the slot. And Roethlisberger too high for Heath Miller. So once again, the Steelers cannot get the ball into the end zone. A very frustrated Roethlisberger will go off and Sweezen will come in to try to make it 12 to three. He had him. Marcus Wheaton is open. He's gonna come right in here. Comes right underneath Justin Brown. That's an easy first down, maybe a touchdown. Made the decision to go to the other way. And then get it. Big stand there by Carolina. Sweezen now for a 30-yard attempt. Uh -oh. Now, well, who came across first? Because it was fourth and four. If Carolina came across the line, Josh Norman was one of the guys who came across. Was he induced or not is the question. It would be a first down if it's against Carolina. Encroachment. Defense. Number 96. Jumped in the neutral zone and made contact. That's a five-yard penalty. Results in a first down. Les Horton came across. Norman followed him. And it's first down and goal. See if we can find it right there and there. No movement prior to. And boy, oh boy, your defense makes a stand and your special teams give it away. Holy cow. Mm -hmm. The ball spotted now at the seven yard line, first and goal. Oh, good, 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 good. Bell is the running back. And Rockless 
Roethlisberger surveys, pump fakes, rolls out, throws, wow. back of the end zone, touchdown, Antonio Brown. Roethlisberger, as he's done so often for so many years, extends the play, and then Brown is just magnificent. How does Ben hold on to this ball with his pump fake? I mean, he must have the biggest hand in the world. Watch the pump fake. Everybody, our camera even moves with the ball. Comes back around, lobs one in the back corner absolutely perfectly like he did in the Super Bowl. Holy smokes, what a play by Ben Roethlisberger. Wow. Scoring plays get reviewed. They check it out. Huge mistake by Horton. Touchdown is good. Squeeze him now for the extra point. And four minutes into the third, that long drought finally over for Pittsburgh. They get a touchdown and lead 16 to 3 in Carolina. Sunday Night Football being brought to you by Bose, official sound of the NFL. By Toyota, let's go places. By the new Samsung Galaxy S5. The next big thing is here. By Corona, inviting you to find your beach. Midwood Smokehouse. we got to go there for the game. There is the man who encroached turning what would have been a likely three points into seven points. Pittsburgh now up 16 to three. And Sweezum will send this one through the end zone. Back to the TD. I'm still shaking my head over this one. This is as good a play as you'll see. Watch the pump fake first of all. You hold on to that ball and then pulls it back down, escapes. Ben being Ben is what we're gonna call it. Now watch his sidearm flip. Sidearm flip lob to the back corner. Kaysen in perfect position. Gets it in over the top. Nice catch by Antonio Brown. Just a fantastic quarterback play by Ben Roethlisberger. <laughs> it's really something. A little sidearm up over. Like a power lob in there to LeBron James. <laughs> After a double pump. And this is Philly Brown. And let's check in with Michelle. Well, not good news for Pittsburgh's linebacking core. Rookie Ryan Shazier is out with a right knee injury. Head orthopedic surgeon Jim Bradley gave him a full knee evaluation, testing his ACL, MCL, PCL. Comparing to his left knee right now, he is out. Meanwhile, Jarvis Jones went to the locker room for a right wrist evaluation and is questionable. All right, thank you, Michelle. I mean, Sean Spence and Arthur Most take those two spots. And the pass brought at the 33-yard line by Philly Brown. And that will move the change. I tell you, we were watching practice the other day, and I was really impressed with this Philly Brown. And I was talking to Mike Shula about him a little bit, and he said, hey, this guy can run routes. He catches the ball well. We just have to give him a chance. And tonight, because of the injury to Jericho Cotri, he's getting that chance, and he's playing well. Rookie free agent, played at Ohio State. And Newton throws, and the catch is made at the 40-yard line, and Benjamin will gain eight yards. And Ike Taylor is hurt. So Taylor writhing in pain. A long time cornerback. Mm. 12 years in the league. And he is down with an injury oh. timeout. Mm. Well, Ike Taylor is down, the 12 year cornerback of the Pittsburgh Steelers. A little friendly fire there as he was making the tackle on Benjamin. And Timmons came in and they will have to take him off and we'll take another look at the play. There's Ike Taylor. Then you're going to get this action coming from Lawrence Timmons. And we won't show you the net result of it, but believe me, you don't want to see it. Well, the sad irony here because uh, Taylor and Peanut Tillman played together in college at Louisiana Lafayette a dozen years ago. And Peanut's a uh, season ended on Sunday Night Football last week in Santa Clara against the 49ers and now his 
college mate Ike Taylor who's done such great work since he was drafted in the fourth round in 2003 will be taken back to the locker room. Little bust on the head from Mike Tomlin. <laughs> well respected. He and Troy Polamalu have been together a long time in that Steelers secondary. And if Ike Taylor caught the football a little bit better than what he does, he probably would have had multiple Pro Bowls. Very good cover guy. Never seemed to quite hang on sometimes, but uh, he is going to be greatly missed in that secondary. So Taylor back. William Gay is their nickel back, so he now comes in and He'll play the role of the fourth defensive back, so he's already in the game. It's second down and one for Carolina. Polamalu on a run blitz and going through the middle, and they really got that running game going here in the third quarter as Mike Mitchell makes the tackle on Jonathan Stewart. And Stewart gets up a little slowly. Remember, D'Angelo Williams is hurt, so Stewart's there. Primary back with Mike Tolbert backing him up. Yeah, they activated Darren Reeves and they are incredibly thin, which is an amazing story. There's D'Angelo Williams for a team that's always been thought of as having too many running backs. I guess Mike Tolbert now becomes the go to guy. Stewart back on the bench through his helmet down, bent over on the sideline. Give it to Tolbert. Over more of a fullback than a, a running back takes it to the 48 yard line where Spence makes the stop. A little unbalanced offensive line over here and Tolbert decides to run it back over to this side with his fullback in there Richie Brockle. But this is becoming an issue maybe less so in this game because even though they're a running football team Kind of getting to the point now they're going to have to open it up a bit. Well, there's Stewart who's missed a lot of games in the last couple of years with injuries. So the agony on his face as Cam now retreats. Only a three man rush and into tight coverage. A flag goes down. Tender for Olsen. Timmons, they're covering on the play. Before the pass was thrown, illegal contact. Defense, number 28, the five-yard penalty, automatic first down. Cortez Allen. Yeah. Working on Kelvin Benjamin, the rookie here. Remember this year, they're going to call it tight, just past the five-yard marker, but it definitely was. Here's Jonathan Stewart. Yeah. You can see that leg roll back behind him. So Stewart out. That's eight penalties now on Pittsburgh for 56 total yards. And Newton will sling it, and it is pulled in. What a catch by Benjamin, tackled there by Cortez Allen. And that's exactly why they got Kelvin Benjamin. They said when Cam Newton decides, when he misses, he typically misses high. And when you get a guy that size, they can go up and make sure that those balls don't get tipped and go into the secondary. But to miss that ball, get it, and then get a knee down, pretty fantastic. Six feet five is Benjamin Tolbert. What a difference. I mean, Steve Smith was what, 5'9? Yeah. He's his primary receiver. Now he's got a guy 6'5. Yeah, and they've become good buddies too, Kelvin Benjamin and Cam Newton. And said Kelvin Benjamin couldn't believe that the NFL wouldn't let him have a single digit number when he came in here and he was all upset. He said, well, wait a minute, what number did you want? He said, number one, that's what I wanted number one. He said, you know what number your quarterback has? You we weren't getting that one anyway. Third and four, not even with your bonus money. Uh -oh. And that is caught. That's right in there to Philly Brown making the catch tackled by Spence and that's the first down. Nice job by offensive coordinator Mike Shula starting to go to work now on the replacement out here. Antoine Blake one on one and Philly Brown continues to make nice catches. The six catches for Brown. Five for Benjamin so 11 grabs by the two rookies tonight. Can 
to the end zone, and it's incomplete. Kelvin Benjamin is there. Antoine Blake covering on the play. Picked him up from Jacksonville in the offseason. Right back to the same spot again, and looked like Kelvin Benjamin just missed time this jump. Got there and really just didn't get his feet underneath him to jump, or this would have been a relatively easy catch for him. They come right back to it. Meanwhile, Jonathan Stewart goes to the locker room. Benjamin comes out for the moment. Burson comes in. So right now, Newton playing with a lot of spare parts. And, and well, some miscommunication there because you've got Moats putting the pressure. Of course, the Steeler defense is also playing with some spare parts. Notable injuries tonight. Shazir out with a knee injury. Jones, another linebacker. We just saw Ike Taylor in an air cast going back to the locker room. So count on all three of those guys being out of the game. Dick LeBeau doing his mixing and matching He's done for so many years. Let's see if they go back to it from the top of the screen. Kelvin Benjamin against Antoine Blake again. Newton looks the other way, and the pass is too high. Intended for Jason Avant, then he had Olsen in the same territory behind him, and it's fourth and ten. And Graham Gano will come in to try to make it a ten-point game. Would have been a first down, but again, Cam Newton missing high, and that has been the issue. No, there's yeah. Greg Olson in behind him. Here's a 40-yard attempt for Graham Gano. And his second field goal of the night. Makes it a 10-point game with the Steelers up 16-6 in the third quarter. Tomorrow, America's number one singing competition is back. Don't miss the voice. Premiering tomorrow at 8. Eastern Pacific, 7 Central, and Mount, followed by the Blacklist. Must see Monday is back on NBC. Pittsburgh leading 16 to 6. Steelers trying to go to 2 and 1. Carolina 2 and 0 coming in. And Roethlisberger able to guide them off a short field to the end zone, ready to go to work again. And off the crossbar. To the 20. Roethlisberger, of course, it all changed when Bruce Arians left as the offensive coordinator. Haley came in. He wanted to protect them more. Passes within 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. 7 through 11, second lowest. And then per interception, 1 per 46. Since Haley came in, he's getting sacked fewer times. So fewer sacks, fewer interceptions, shorter passes. And last year was only the second time in his career that he started all 16 games. The other year was 08 when they wound up winning the Super Bowl against Arizona. They start with Blunt in the backfield. And the pass out in the flat to the fullback. Will Johnson for a short game and he flagged down. Pass interference, offense, number 89, 10-yard penalty, replay first down. That's the backup tight end, Matt Spaeth. Completely unnecessary pick. Right here, just a little nudge, but the ball is way out in the flat. Well, that's the break Carolina's defense needs, maybe, because now they get a chance to do a little pass rushing. Last time they were backed up, started it with a run to try to get out of the hole. First and 20 from the 10. It's Brown in motion. Fake to him. Swing at the bell, and he gets clobbered at the seven-yard line. Thomas Davis, he of the three reconstructive knee surgeries, right there to count it. Isn't that amazing when you think about a guy having three knee surgeries on the same knee 
and come back and play at this level. He is sort of the Lance Briggs, if you will, to Luke Kuechly's Brian Erlacher. Play a lot of the same stuff. Of course, Rivera was there in Chicago with those guys, and they've been working hard on some of that Tampa 2 stuff they run there. He's pipping to Jordan, right? Well, that's a better example. Look out. Oh, there goes Bell. Le'Veon Bell into Carolina territory for a huge game. Inside the 15 before Deku saves the touchdown. So it was a first and 20, and that's an 81 yard run. Watch these two guys right here with the double team block driving them straight back in. Keekley ends up on the wrong side of that double team, and when you get that kind of push off a double team block, the linebacker has to pick one side or the other. Le'Veon Bell with that patience, read it perfectly, and off to the races. Great double team block right there by David DeCastro and Marcus Gilbert. So now at the 11, they give it to Blunt. And he works his way to the seven yard line. So the second time now this great Carolina Panthers defense has had the Steelers backed up in long yardage situations and they let them off the hook both times. That time with a masterful double team block and a big run by Le'Veon Bell. So Bell had one 100 yard game last season. Missed the first three games last year with a foot injury. But he was their ace back and they hope he'll be that man for the next several years. Blunt still in there on second down and seven. Quick toss Brown. And Antonio will take the ball to the one yard line. They can as you can see get a first down without a touchdown and he may just have done that. This is a better job right here by Antonio Brown. Remember earlier I said he should have put that shoulder down. Watch this time. Smells that goal line. Almost gets there. Nice job by Ben recognizing the coverage out there and just get it to his playmaker Antonio Brown and they have a first down so first and goal with three and a half to go in the quarter from the one. This is when you love the Garrett Blunt and his size in the ball game. And there's the fullback Johnson in there with him. They fake it to him and then the pass is caught. Uh -oh. no. It's dropped. A flag is thrown. Michael Palmer would be the number three tight end. Had it right there. And worse, he's going to end up with an offensive pass interference. So instead of just jamming it in from the one yard line, pass interference, offense. Now you're back up. Two, 10 yard penalty. Replay first down. He pushed off. Tom can only shake his head. A little extension of the arm right there against Charles Godfrey. Usually you can get away with it if you, oh, the ball was tipped. But usually you can get away with that if you just push with an elbow, you extend the hand, you're going to get it called. So first and goal from the one becomes first and goal from the 11. And Bell. Dances to the seven yard line. Second down, goal. Roman Harper comes up and makes the tackle on that one. A couple of veteran guys, Roman Harper, are cut by the Saints. Thomas Deku cut by the Atlanta Falcons, despite the fact that uh, Harper at one time had seven sacks during a year. Deku made it to the Pro Bowl. And they both land here, and they're happy about it. Burger. Throws touchdown. Boy, I tell you why you leave him with that much time. Antonio Brown is going to get free, but there's a flag down at the one yard line in the middle of the field. The one. Holding defense number 59. The penalty is declined. It's over the play. Touchdown. That is Keekley. 
10 catches, two touchdowns for Brown. Let's just watch the big guys up here. This has been a masterful performance so far. Marcus Gilbert, the right tackle, who has been under fire this week. He's had a pretty rough go of it for two weeks, but it is the protection alone that made this play. Antonio Brown had all day to work across, and Ben Roethlisberger is getting it done. And swings him for the point after. Both of Brown's touchdowns have been seven yard receptions and the Steelers lead it 23 to six. This week, Jimmy Fallon welcoming some top level guests including Kenny Chesney on the Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon this week right here on NBC. Bank of America Stadium hard by downtown Charlotte. But right now pretty quiet because the Steelers have taken command. Carolina will start its next drive from the 20 yard line. Been talking all night about this matchup. Le'Veon Bell, Luke Keekley. Anytime you can get up on the second level, here's Marquise Pouncey getting it done. Le'Veon Bell allowing it to happen and then the big double team. Keekley has no choice, he has to pick a side. Le'Veon Bell sets up the blocks and executes. And then after losing a little weight, he has enough speed to nearly take that one the distance. That's the longest run by a Pittsburgh Steeler in 44 years. <laughs> in the 20 yard line. Newton throwing, it's Olsen making the catch. Gain of 13. <laughs> Back to Bell, and I mean, here's your quiz. Well, there it is. There's the answer for you at the bottom. Frenchy Fuqua, longest Steelers run in 1970, and it held up 85 yards. Longest run since then. Yeah, I was going to say Frenchy. Oh, sure you were. <laughs> right. <laughs> First and 10 at the 33. Newton gets away, throws, blocked by the rookie Benjamin to the 50-yard line. Tackled by Arthur Motes, first down. Boy, that's a good sign for Carolina that these two are starting to develop a little chemistry. Watch this little move by Benjamin up the field, but then Cam is going to just flip it over the top. Nice little touch there. Get it to the big guy. Good drive starter. A little over a minute to play in the third quarter. And passes a short one, gain of a, a couple. Let's go to Michelle. Well, Jonathan Stewart is officially questionable with a right knee contusion. You can see him getting worked on by the athletic training staff. He had gone to the locker room, came back, did some agility drills with the athletic trainers, but it for the moment. Still officially questionable, Al. All right, thank you, Michelle. Very frustrating last couple of seasons for Stewart, who spent a lot of time on the sideline on the stationary bike. And D'Angelo Williams hurt, gets the opportunity the last couple of weeks, and now he's on the shelf again. Final half minute of the quarter. Second and seven. And Cam's going to go down. And that's Arthur Motes, who came in, of course, when Jarvis Jones got hurt, and Motes gets the sack. Boy, Arthur Motes looks like a pass rusher on that one, Denny. Came over from the Buffalo Bills. He looked like he was shot out of a cannon on that one. Beautifully done. Working against one of the better ones, Mini Silatolu up front. And that's the end of the third. Pittsburgh leading 23-6. And Sunday Night Football resumes after these messages. Material coverage is being brought to you by Geico. Looking at downtown Charlotte, Al Michaels, Chris Collins with Michelle DeFoya, Sunday Night Football. Wrapping up the third week of the season with Pittsburgh trying to go to two and one. Carolina trying to avoid its first loss, but a big hill to climb here. And they start with a third and 15 from their own 46 yard line. 
a lot of time, but the secondary does its work, and then he gets it off to Mike Tolbert, but he's going to be short of the first down of the 41-yard line, tackled there by Cortez Allen. Yeah, Riverboat Ron may decide. Yeah, I think it's time here. Three-possession game. Why not? Go back to the sack here. In case you were wondering, there are no horse collar fouls when the quarterback is in the pocket. Just wanted to make sure you had seen that in case you had a question. Fourth and two. You have almost have to go for it. Early in the fourth, it is a three possession game. The ball is on the plus side of the 50 at the 42 yard line. And Newton tries to convert, and he is able to because the catch is made by Benjamin. Forward progress, that's in the first down. Stopped there by Allen. More and more and more, you're starting to see in the biggest of situations, it is the rookie, Kelvin Benjamin, who is getting the football. I just think Cam Newton has a lot of trust in that big body to get rebound position and be able to fight off the defenders. Seven catches for him, seven for the other rookie, Philly Brown. Blitz coming. Gets it away. Caught by Olsen. Down the sideline. He goes into the end zone. Greg Olsen. Touchdown, Panthers. There aren't many tight ends in the NFL that can match up against a corner like Cortez Allen one-on-one. -on -one. Not only win the route, but then take it the distance for a touchdown. Nice week there for a young man that's had a difficult one son in the hospital four surgeries and for Greg Olson that somehow he's been able to maintain his focus throughout quite a young man so trying to make it a 10 point game is Gano Newton's history he's been better against the blitz than against the four man rush and he faced the blitz that time. And the Steelers get burned as Carolina gets its first touchdown of the night. And the extra point is good with 13-28. So a touchdown on a fourth and two makes it 23-13 Steelers. Sunday Night Football brought to you by Cadillac by Universal Pictures, Dracula Untold in theaters and IMAX. October 10th, by National Car Rental, Go National, Go Like a Pro, and by T-Mobile. On the displays at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. NASCAR coming our way on NBC next year. You can do a race there? Not there, but I've been to the Daytona 500 a couple of times. I call two races in my youth in Charlotte Motor Speedway. Really? I'm a guy who barely knows how to do self-serve, but <laughs> there I was with Jackie Stewart. <laughs> Different time. Let's go to Michelle. Well, Greg Olson told me it's been a difficult month for him and his wife, Kara. Their almost two-year-old son, TJ, who was born with a complex heart defect, had his third open heart surgery about a month ago and after complications had to undergo a fourth surgery 10 days ago to have a pacemaker installed. But after almost four weeks in the hospital, TJ went home last night, which is a sign things are improving, Al. Boy, how great is that? What a, what a oh. picture that is. He looks just like picture. Greg. Yeah. Holy cow. Mm. What an adorable child. God bless him. God bless him. Right. Home and we're that? so excited to have him. Mm. And Olsen's touchdown has put Carolina back in the game as Le'Veon Bell goes next to nowhere. Well, we talked about some of the different styles of this offense with Ben Roethlisberger. And tonight, because of the pass rush, a lot of these short, quick releases by Ben Roethlisberger. Get it out of his hands. Don't let him take sacks. Don't take chances on him getting injured. And you can see about as quickly as he could catch it, he was throwing it. Sometimes they didn't even get the laces when he was throwing it. And then there's a few of those other plays tonight that uh, the old Ben being Ben plays that have been pretty good too. Well, you can't believe Ben is completely thinking about right? Yeah, no way. A little flip. Bell again takes it to the 24-yard line. 
All right, so there's one style of Ben, and here's Ben 2.0. <laughs> Our poor Tracer could barely catch up with him. I've never seen it turn a different color. Pump fake, pump fake, scramble around, sidearm, lob to the back corner. As soon as he sees Antoine Kaysen come up, over the top, perfectly done. Two touchdowns to Antonio Brown tonight, third and six. Crowd back into it right now. And Roethlisberger throws, and that's caught, but it's not going to be a first down. Shy of the first down and getting bounced around. Bumper car is weak. Stopped by Benet Ben Wickery. I guarantee you, Ron Rivera is screaming, get away. Do not give up another cheap penalty for a first down here, guys. Well, that's about the perfect scenario right now. Exactly what Carolina needed a three possession game. They go for it on fourth and two, get a touchdown. Follow that up with a three and out for Pittsburgh. And Brad Wing now to send it down to Philly Brown. Good deep kick. 58 yards dropped by Philly Brown. Then he loses it again. And it's loose in the end zone, and the Steelers are there, and the Steelers are going to wind up with a touchdown. Shamarco Thomas was able to create the fumble, and the ball winds up in the end zone, and the Carolina Panthers can't believe it. Robert Goldman is going to wind up with the football in the end zone. Marco Thomas, one of the exciting young players, not very big, comes up with a huge play there, and then I think it was Robert Golden who was that actually is. knocked down, who had to get up and eventually recover it, but boy, Billy Brown, what a double mistake that was. Right mm. when it seemed like the momentum had finally turned, getting the ball back, and what a mess. Boy, the Carolina Panthers, a team that usually recovered in the end zone by a kicking team for a touchdown. See, the key is if it had been muffed, you can't return those. But when he picked it up, he's a ball carrier at that point, and then it's a fumble. Absolutely. 59-yard punt. So it was a great punt by Wing. And then a killer with 11 minutes to go. Carolina Panthers have simply self-destructed tonight with penalties and plays like that. And that was a monster. That play, you had Le'Veon Bell's 81-yard run if they had them backed up deep. And right now, Pittsburgh very much in command again, 30-13. Channel and NBC bring you exclusive coverage of the Ryder Cup. U.S. taking on Europe. If you love golf, there's things like the Ryder Cup, and you'll see all of the action on NBCSN and NBC beginning Friday. There's Ike Taylor. Arm in a cast. We saw it happen to him. Stalwart cornerback for years. And we hope. Now done for the year, but uh, it does not look very good. Philly Brown downing this one in the end zone. 11 minutes to go the 17-point game. With NFL Now, get access to the biggest NFL video library on the planet. Get NFL Now free at NFL.com slash now. You know the way to Charlotte? I do. Charlotte Island? <laughs> Lots of Charlotte's. Tonight we're in the, the North Carolina version oh. as Newton gets whacked as he throws. A flag goes down. That was Jason Worlds who you, popped him and he gets up very gimpy. You cannot intentionally go to the knees of a quarterback. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number 93, forcible contact to the knee area of the quarterback. 
that's a 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Apology notwithstanding. Now Jason World slips a little bit, coming, looping all the way around, and just as he's turning the corner, slips. I don't think he intentionally did this. Kind of slipped and then just lunged into Cam Newton, who's very lucky that he had both feet off the mm. ground on that player. That could have been major, but mm. Jason World's telling him, listen, I did not do that on purpose. Apology accepted. The ball is at the 35-yard line. 10.54 left in the fourth. for a very short game to Jason Avant covered there by Cortez Allen and he's a man tonight Joey Porter there sending in the signals the longtime linebacker for Pittsburgh a lot of fun to watch him play got into coaching was at Colorado State and Tomlin brings him in to help with the linebackers and a lot of young players over there inside and outside on this team Pass is too high. Intended for Philly Brown. That'll make it third down and six. And Cam keeps hopping around on that ankle. He is clearly uncomfortable. I'm trying to hang in there because, well, Derek Anderson already won one game for him earlier this season. So I guess it's a possibility, but I don't think he even got hit or maybe stepped on or something at the end of that play. Probably came up. Slightly hurt on the first series of the game. Had to take a timeout back in the first quarter. Talked about the surgery he had in the offseason. But hanging in there on a third down and six here. Under pressure, he gets clobbered again. And the pass is incomplete. The time Cameron Hayward bangs into the turf. Long night for Cam, fourth down. Cameron Hayward's having a night tonight. This time against Trey Turner right here. Working against Turner here. And he just does a complete bull rush right over the top of Turner, who's still trying to pick it up. And Joey Porter, <laughs> be careful, Joey. These guys are getting bigger. Oh, no. <laughs> Joey and his goatage. Brown is back underneath the punt, but he's going to let it bounce. And it takes a good bounce for Carolina. And is down to the two-yard line. The 10-09 remaining in the fourth. 30 to 13 Steelers. What were you wearing there? But first, first things first here. There was most consecutive games, five or more catches. Lavernius Coles. You wouldn't have guessed that, right? Yeah, no. Had the record of 19, and Brown will try for his 20th. When they go home next week to take on Tampa Bay, leaving on Bell with the carry here. You know, Chris, you, you look at the Pittsburgh schedule. They win this game tonight. All of a sudden, two and one. Next week, Tampa Bay and Pittsburgh. Then at Jacksonville, at Cleveland, Houston, Indy, and Baltimore, all at home. I mean. The coaches are going to say, hey, look, every week's a different week, but that's pretty good for them. It's pretty good, especially because they're a team that is trying to develop, and I would say defensively tonight, they took a big jump out there. And also, first time really this offensive line has played together as a group, and Le'Veon Bell is still young, so whatever they are right now, by the time they get finished with that little stretch, they're going to be tough to handle, but that division is going to be really tough this year. The Bengals now the only undefeated team in the AFC. Baltimore Ravens with a big comeback and a win in Cleveland. And Cleveland looks really tough this year. Already a win against the New Orleans Saints. Hung in there until the end. So pretty easy for Pittsburgh. Carolina, a whole other thing. They go to Baltimore next week. Chicago then comes here. And then Cincinnati, they go to Green Bay. Then Seattle comes in. And New Orleans. Not quite easy pickings. Third and six from the six-yard line. As Roethlisberger throws, and it's going to take some more time off the clock as Marcus Wheaton picks up the first down. Melvin White makes the tackle, and we have eight and a half to play. I tell you, I'm just so impressed with Todd Haley in that situation. You've got a huge lead back up. About the only way you can lose this game is to throw a pick six, and if you're going to throw a pick six, that's the kind of pass that you right. throw it on, and they just don't care. Ben's hot tonight. Just let him rip it. Ben says, I've been to this rodeo before. Yeah. 
nose. And this little package has been a good one, too. This two tight end, extra fullback package with Rivera Blunt, and I just put the kiss of death on that. Blunt gets blunted right there for a loss of one. To the 11 yard line, Luke Keekley making the stop. Well, when Luke Keekley sees something, he's going to go get it. This little kind of phone booth kind of play is a little bit of his specialty. He got LeGarrette Blunt before he got started. Loss of three on the play, halfway through the quarter. Second and 13. White 80! White second! And then gunning in, and it is Miller. There's a flag thrown. He makes the catch. He's able to wrestle it away from the defender. Keekley was back there covering on the play. Flag down at the 33 yard line. Before the pass was thrown, illegal contact. Defense, number 23. That penalty is declined. Result of the play, first down. Result of the play is a 30 yard gain penalty on White. I don't think Keekley could believe he didn't have an interception on this play. He was perfectly situated, undercut the throw, but it was just so good by Ben Roethlisberger. He got it in there anyway. Here he's going to undercut this thing in great position, and that ball is thrown just slightly behind. He might end up with a pick six himself on that one. White 80. White 70. And back to the ground and back to chewing up the clock. And Blunt will pick up the first down and a lot more. LeGarrette Blunt out of bounds inside the 10 yard line. Another huge run for the Steelers. We have the 81 yarder by Bell and this one is good for 51 yards. Yeah, Heath Miller in the backfield in this two tight end extra fullback set here. Stayed on this block just long enough. See if we can see him coming over right in here. Stayed on it, stayed on it and LeGarrette Blunt, like Mariano Rivera, one of the great closers. This is a guy when you come in in the fourth quarter with him, good luck. Injury timeout. So the Pittsburgh Steelers, 127 yards on the ground in their opener, then 99 against Baltimore, but they uh, trailed early and lost that game 10 days ago. And then tonight, 215 yards. Mm. Of course, when you have a, a an 81 yard run and a 50 yard run, you will average about 8.3 per carry. This is by far the best this offensive line has played together as well. Well, Thomas Davis was the injured Panther. He's back on the sideline right now, the linebacker. It's first and goal. And the handoff. Le'Veon Bell to the eight yard line. Tail end of that run by LeGarrette Blunt. Thomas Davis right there. Going to grab the back of that hamstring, and that is not a good sign. There aren't. Many things that have gone right tonight for the Carolina Panthers. Mike Munchak coming over to coach the offensive line. Not long ago, the head coach of the Tennessee Titans. You've got Haley was the head coach in Kansas City. Laval was the head coach in Cincinnati. Tomlin and Munchak, four guys with head coaching experience on the staff. Blunt is back in there. Big hole, and LeGarrette Blunt will not be taken down. Touchdown. Will Johnson, the fullback, providing the escort. Oh, man, did they find the grouping here. This has been dynamic all night long, this big package. Watch right there. Will Johnson is going to come around and make the final block. And then LeGarrette Blunt. <laughs> Jeez. Takes Thomas Deku right in the end zone with him. Good luck. Remember that stretch he had with the in the playoffs? I think it was against Indianapolis, a huge game. And Four touchdowns. Yeah. Week before, just about as good. Squeeze him for the point after. 538 left in the fourth. And the Pittsburgh Steelers will have a fun ride home. Only about a an hour flight back to Pittsburgh, up 37 to 13. Now you have to remember that this is 
one of the best defenses, finished number two overall a season ago, only to Seattle, and it has been power football, Pittsburgh Steeler power football tonight that has just dominated. I, I thought this group, the offensive line, remember Marquise Pouncey and David DeCastro both sort of were injured for a full year each, but never really played together. Marcus Gilbert came in, a lot of questions about him tonight and his pass protection. Had a big time uh, problem with Elvis Doomerville in that last game. Cody Wallace stepping in for an injured Ramon Foster. Kelvin Beecham out there at left tackle. But this is a group tonight that has dominated the football game against one of the best defensive front sevens that there is. And that happy group on the bench right there with Pouncey in the middle. And the Pittsburgh Steelers had that eight and a half quarter drought which ended with an exclamation point tonight. This is the way they looked against the Cleveland Browns in the first half of the opening. Reason to kick off. Of course, we live in the age of the selfie, but there's there's no penalty for simulating a selfie in the end zone this these days. Penalty for everything else. Meanwhile, hate to see Ike Taylor. He used to introduce himself as swagging all these years. Loved that, but there he is. Cast on his right arm. He and Polamalu coming in in the same draft. Look at those guys, they're, they're the most catches in NFL history, and they've matched up against almost all of them through the years. And Hines, of course, was their teammate, right. so they couldn't match up. Almost hard to believe they never played against Chris Carter. Yeah. Hey, Mike, four. A little Mike quarterback Mike change Mike. now, no reason to get Cam Newton beat up anymore. That's so Derek Mike. Anderson comes into the game Mike. to start this drive from the 20. He led him to the victory on opening day against Tampa Bay. Former Cleveland Brown also makes the catch here. Gain a nine. Derek Anderson had a nice game in that opener. Although Tampa did make a late run in that one and he had a potential interception drop that kind of saved the day for him. Flip it to Tolbert. And he'll get the first down. If we get Anderson in Cleveland, a few years ago, he was good enough to make the Pro Bowl one year. That's exactly right. Cam Newton, this was not the way it was supposed to go, but I really think that D'Angelo Williams is such a key for this football team. He adds an explosive element, a little quickness to them that they really do need, and without him, they're sort of a different team. And Colbert will get undercut. Mike Mitchell. Two big mistakes for Carolina here in the second half on the fourth and four, setting up for a field goal, the encroachment, and then that led to this touchdown. The double pump. Brown makes the catch in the corner of the end zone. This was the killer right here, Philly Brown. Losing in the end zone. Touchdown Steelers. And as if the night hasn't been bad enough down on the field now is Mike Tolbert. Yep. Well, they've already lost Jonathan Stewart. Now there's Tolbert. D'Angelo Williams is hurt. Fozzie Whitaker is another back. He's inactive tonight. Let's see what happens to Tolbert here. Mm. Man's awkwardly on the, the left ankle and now is able to at least get up and walk off with some assistance. Wow. Hmm. This is one of those sometimes you go back and it's so bad. The coach says, all right, we're just going to throw this tape in the trash can and let's go get ready for the next one. Well, we hope that man, D'Angelo Williams, can come back and play next week when they go to Baltimore. This is quite a statement, though, by the Pittsburgh Steelers to come in here and take on Carolina. And not just beat them, but really physically manhandle them in this game. Second and nine, you saw Darren Reeves, a rookie from Alabama, Birmingham, and the pass is off his hand and incomplete. Third down. Now, one of the other things I've noticed tonight is that it looks like the safety combination is starting to figure each other out now. You've got Mike Mitchell, who played for the Carolina Panthers in this great defense. 
a year ago, matching up with Troy Polamalo. And, of course, Ryan Clark was there forever. And Polamalo sometimes will just get a feeling, and he has the right in Dick LeBeau's defense to go take a shot. And Ryan Clark, for all those years, sort of was able to cover for him. And tonight, the more you watch it, Mike Mitchell now is starting to get a little feel, and Polamalo is starting to get loose on the front end. Use a NASCAR term. <laughs> going to look under the hood as Burson makes the catch here to pick up the first down. There we go right there. There's Burson. And Burson is a guy that went to Wofford College and uh, as did the owner of the Carolina Panthers, Jerry Richardson. Both were receivers there. Across the border in South Carolina there is the founder of the team. Wofford alum right there. You know you look at this team they've been in the league now 20 seasons. They've been to a Super Bowl. This is a team they oh, haven't had back to back winning seasons. Clock operator. We set the game clock for four the clock minutes situation. And seconds. They've had four big flashes. They came in as an expansion team in 95 96. They go to the NFC Championship game, the one game from the Super Bowl. Then John Fox takes them to the Super Bowl in 03. Then in 08, they go to the playoffs, but they lose to Arizona at home, and the Cardinals wind up going to the Super Bowl. And then last year, 12 and 4. So four flashes, but they can't put it together back to back. Into the end zone, and that is there he a goes touchdown, again. Calvin <laughs> Benjamin. What a catch. This guy is unbelievable. I mean, he just makes catches like this. The impossible catches, he never drops. Look at this play by Kelvin Benjamin. Just right over the top, and really Blake was right there, had his head turned around, but beautiful throw that time by Derek Anderson. Put a lot of air under that throw. Perfect. Well, he's a gem. Puts it all the way in. He has made two or three catches that you just shake your head and go, he just might be something. Also had an eight-inch advantage over Blake, so they've been throwing to him 11 times tonight, and that's eight catches. Kind of like uh, Alshon Jeffrey, Brandon Marshall of Chicago, right? Those big bodies. They'll go for two to try to make it a two-possession game. And make it a 16 point game. See if Anderson can pull this off. And you have an outside kick. And. Well, not going to matter now because Benjamin has it knocked away from him by William Gay. So that keeps it a three possession game at 37 to 19. Nice job by William Gay just stripping this ball out. This is the kind of catch Benjamin's been making all night. And Gay just went really strong through his arms and ripped it out of there. We talked about some of the catches that Kelvin Benjamin has made. Let's take a look back. Here was opening day against Tampa Bay. This one looked like it had no chance at all and just sort of reached around the defender and made it there. Watch this one. One-hander. Right on the sideline, gets that knee down, the ball just sticks in his hand. Of course, also made the big play right there in this game. And won't forget the one he made to win the national championship a year ago. That is a true first round draft pick. Yeah. You know, if you're going to get rid of Steve Smith, you better replace him with somebody who has some potential. And they found him. It was all part of the master plan. Smith was going to go. They had to find an ace. And it looks like they got their man. And also Jericho Contrary, who they picked up from Pittsburgh, who had 10 touchdowns from Roethlisberger. Last year was hurt tonight, so he wasn't in. Avant was hobbled. Running back situation we detailed. And an onside kick here is not going to take place. Instead, they'll Give it to Pittsburgh at the 20 yard line. So Sunday night, week four, we head down to Texas where the Saints off their victory today will be taking on the Dallas Cowboys. We'll race a 21 point deficit. It all starts with football night in America. 
at 7 Eastern time. So Drew Brees back on target. They beat Minnesota. Of course, a tremendous comeback for the Cowboys in St. Louis today. Yeah, the Dallas Cowboys, sometimes you wonder how they get it done, and they certainly make it interesting. I, I think it was a year ago when the Saints put up 40 first downs against that Cowboys defense, but we'll see. Bruce Gradkowski now comes in, so the backup gets to play for Pittsburgh as well. Came over from Cincinnati a couple of years ago. <laughs> With a hurdle move. Bell's really good at that stuff too. And a gain of 17. Yeah, speaking of patience, watch LeGarrette Blunt's move here. Just patiently right over the top. We have seen that before. Remember when he played in Tampa? There would be multiple times that, because when you're a big back or you're a tight end or whatever, defensive backs want no part of taking you on up high. They get run over, so they want to chop your legs out. So those guys have learned it. They've started just hurtling. Well, that's been a hallmark of Le'Veon Bell as well. One, and one is closing in on 100 yards. Bell already has 147, and that's 97 yards tonight for Blunt. And for Pittsburgh tonight, 245 yards on the ground. Of course, Antonio Brown, he kind of did that hurdle a little different way, didn't he? Yeah. He didn't quite punt, make it. On a punt return. <laughs> I see Ben thought that was funny. Yeah. Everybody thinks they're Ronaldo Nehemiah these days, right? Uh, or Roger uh, Kingdom. Skeets, yeah. I mean, Roger Working Kingdom. Working Arizona. Won gold medal in 84. Yeah. I'm an assistant coach. We talked to him when we were in Arizona in preseason. Flag is down. Just lined up offside. You can see it from here. Ron Torbert, our referee, is a first-year referee in the NFL, making his national TV debut, making sure he gets his face time. Offside. Defense. Number 94. Lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Running back comparison right there. Bell with that. 81 yard romp. Huge play at that point in the game when Carolina had him backed up and blunt three yards shy of triple figures. Well, you know, that's how Carolina beats people. They get you in bad situations, backed up, they get turnovers, or they force you to punt the ball, and the Pittsburgh Steelers twice tonight completely turned the tables on them when they were backed up. And there's Blunt. Trying to pick up the first down and should have it. As we come down to the two minute warning. Tough week for Ron Rivera this week. Mm -hmm. yep. Had to handle a lot of stuff. 120 seconds left before the Pittsburgh Steelers fly home with their second win of the season. Right after the game, the Volkswagen post-game report. Michelle on the field. She'll have the stars of the game. Bob, Tony, and Mike break it down. Look at other news around the NFL. And uh, a peek ahead to next Sunday night's matchup in Arlington, Texas, between the Saints and the Dallas Cowboys. Really no other way. And I won't go all the way through all the Greg Hardy stuff and Guess we'd give him his day in court. He's already had one. Now it goes to a jury trial, but on the football field, this pass rush is not the same without him. It just is not. They're not as good. No way will they get him back until at the earliest, November 17th. And there goes Blunt, and he has over 100 yards tonight. But Garrett Blunt. Antoine Kaysen said, fool me once, and this time he stood right in there. That almost looked like the Antonio Brown play. Blunt was going to try and get over him. Kaysen stood right there and almost took the flat-footed kick to the face mask we saw earlier this season from Antonio Brown. Now we talked about Hardy. Hopefully next week, for a change, we can open up the telecast, and Michelle will not have to do a report on the rogues gallery. Oh. I'll tell you, for football fans, I know it's been rough on everybody, but 
There's no choice now. The NFL has to take the absolute lead. They have to be the standard on that issue from this day forward because it has been embarrassing. The NFL has been way behind the curve on that issue. It was Art Rooney said and we mentioned at the top of the show the president of the Steelers. Anything good comes out of it. It's brought everything into the public consciousness. One more play one more kneel down deep safety on this uh, play here the uh, insurance policy is pull them on and that will end the ball game. So Mike Tomlin watches his team come in big scoring drought they've been outscored 50 to 9 in the last six quarters prior to the game and come away with a resounding win mainly due to the second half prowess of the running attack the full game prowess of a defense 28 second half points and for Ben tonight a 196 yard night two touchdowns coming up next the Volkswagen post game report after these messages from your NBC station.